Meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Uh, the meeting being duly advertised and properly constituted with a quorum present, uh, I will now uh, ask for approval of the agenda. Is that a motion? Yeah. Jim? It is. Thank you. And a second? And ads. Uh, there's the on table resolution that's referenced in your agenda already for 9A, which is <coughs> approval of grant application. Okay. Which I'll pass around. Thanks. Sorry, I had it there and then I left it at home. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Open it up a hole punch. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah, choice of holes, that's good. Okay, so that's 9A. Uh, while we're on 9, is it acting mayor or deputy mayor? Acting. Acting. What, you're per firing the, me? Per the procedure bylaw. You're not a very good actor. I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, <laughs> acting, actor. acting mayor is the person who takes the chair in the absence of the mayor. <coughs> yeah. You're, you're uh, that means... We're, is it not alternate mayor? Just called acting mayor. Procedure bylaw is right here. It's in the procedure bylaw? I mean, I know, for example, I see at Metro every now and then, Gregor Robertson goes to meet the Pope, and then somebody else is <coughs> acting mayor. He's the mayor. We could say acting Carl. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering, is acting the right term? <coughs> yep. But, okay. I've got several so, topics, I'll bring it up under council. Do you want me to read it out to you? Yeah. Maybe Paragraph well. 13 of the procedure bylaw says, Annually in December, council must, from amongst the council members, designate councillors to serve as the council member responsible for acting in the place of the mayor, <coughs> bracket, acting mayor, okay. when the mayor is absent or otherwise unable to act, or when the office of mayor is vacant. And then it goes on to say responsibilities are similar, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, fine. That's uh, I'll, uh, right or wrong, it's in the bylaw. And then it's effective November 15th until a certain date. To get it right until uh, the next. No, well, at your December meeting, you're going to we'll, we'll set the schedule again. for 2017. Okay. So, and, okay, so and, there's and no by which time you'll have another counselor. So, yeah. So you might, yeah, you might reconsider this in December. It's just, it's almost a little stop gap for a month. Just a stop gap, fine. Okay, is everybody good with that? Okay, anything else? No? Okay, that was easy. Uh, all in favor of the agenda as amended and opposed? That carries. Public participation. Um, is, uh, I, I thought I saw a name on that thing, but that may be from. He's not here. And he's not here? No, nothing. Okay. Delegations, Connor Tremblay. So, uh, Connor has indicated that uh, he was not able to be here at the start of the meeting. He's hoping to get here um, <coughs> a little later in the meeting. Uh, we indicated that this is sort of the time, but it's up to Council. Council has the ability to defer the matter and give him a chance to get here if you like. Sure. Uh, so. Everybody good with that? Okay. Okay, minutes of the last meeting, the one of November 1st. Um, can I have a motion to adopt? Uh, sorry, just before you do that, do you, you want to just pass a motion to defer uh, the delegation? Yeah, okay, so I'll take a motion to defer the uh, delegation until such time as the proponent arrives in a second or, and or if he doesn't arrive then or not <laughs> yeah and we'll be waiting a long time uh opposed and that carries so the minutes I have my <coughs> uh i had just one or two on nine nine the resolution mayors is mayor s apostrophe because multiple mayors But I do want to hear that that is acceptable Sorry. to Where are you? Page, page 8, 9A. Mm -hmm. Mayor's, the apostrophe goes after the S. Mm -hmm. um, but is that adequate wording to allow that to happen when need be? Because TransLink is different to Metro. I guess that's going to be good enough. Yeah, I, I tried to get a hold of um, 
of the corporate secretary, corporate secretary for TransLink, and didn't uh, talk. I had an She's email busy. exchange with Mike Fuda, but he wasn't the right guy. So yeah, no, he wouldn't. Have. And I did clarify with uh, with Chris Pagnell at uh, GBRD or Metro <coughs> as to the other one. So and so we don't need to say director and committee member. No. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, yeah, I guess when I go to Metro committees, I'm I'm addressed as director, so that's fine. Okay. Okay, so no changes there. Mm -hmm. Uh, except under 13, it's it's Ms. or Mrs., but it, it needs to be consistent. Unless you don't mind your wife being called uh, multiple. She prefers Mrs. I, really? <laughs> <laughs> what do you prefer? <laughs> Mrs. too. My yes. sister had a friend who was a doctor, and she went to her sister's party, and they had, she didn't know the people. And so she said, my sister asked her, do you wish to be called doctor or Mrs.? She says, oh, please, Mrs. It was a lot easier to get than the, or a lot harder to get than the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's always stuck in my mind. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, there's a second motion on the table to adopt the minutes as amended, and there are no amendments except for one uh, typo. Two typos. So, two typos. Um, so all in favor? Opposed? It carries. This is arising. I never remember how to do this now. We have to go through the minutes again to check that there's anything left. Fred. I have a question on 12. <clears throat> um, the immunization clinic, when we got it from the uh, um, Remembrance Day service, there was nothing going on in here. Did it not come about? Sorry, you're on 12? 12, yeah. Yeah, the immunization oh, clinic. The that was oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, that's going to happen this Friday because they didn't realize when I first talked to them that it was Remembrance Day. Uh -huh. So he had no coverage for his actual pharmacy because it was a holiday. So he can only come if he's got coverage. So he's coming this Friday. Makes sense. Okay, that's fine. And I don't think we need to change the minutes for that. No. Yeah, that's fine. Because that is what you reported to us. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the, on the business arising issues on the minutes, uh, CEO Dijon to respond to Helen Watterson with input from CFO Rook. And as I understand it... You left it long enough, she said, forget it. Apparently. Okay, well, in general, that's not great, but uh, that, that's one that we did. I did respond to Myron today, to be perfectly honest, but I did. Um, and he already responded within about 10 minutes. Okay, uh, anything else arising? Peter, you, you know how this works. I don't. How do I know what else is arising? We have to go well, look through everything. Else, uh, <coughs> so if that's it, then... I, I don't know. So uh, everybody good with moving on? Okay. And unfinished business. IRI's page 13. We all have a large copy. Okay, so can you just remind us how this works now? So it's just the, uh, the, one, the one ad which is um, to do with the uh, PC assessment data and um, the evolution of that request. And I think Pam's probably looked into any um, issues that we may have with respect to meeting that request. Okay, and where is that? It's on the first page of the IRRs. Request for counsel. I just wonder where my marked up IRR is on. This is a no, that's an old one. That's an old one. Please <laughs> tell me I didn't forget it. A new one? No, because I marked up my old one. With lots and lots and lots of questions. Do you want to beat your land speed record running home? No. <laughs> no, I'll just defer. I'll just do it live. Um, okay, so I'm... In fact, yeah, I'll just look at this one in here. I can just barely read it. Thank you, large. Print, Charles. <coughs> yeah, all right, thanks. There you go. Thanks. 
Okay, so uh, I guess this was an information request. I had three questions arising from the data you provided. Thank yes. you. Do you have the answers? I have some of them, yes. Okay. So I don't know if you wanted them in an email to council. I can answer some of them now. Uh, well, um, whichever is easiest. Um, I'll probably answer the first two, and then I just um, I just kind of wanted to explain how we get this information because some of the other answers we probably won't be able to get until at least next week. We actually don't get the information directly from BC Assessment because all we get from them is a, a data file which we load into Maze that goes into the property tax system, or we get the PDFs that you can see as well by just going on the website. Um, so what we've and we've struggled with being able to get the BCA data in Excel format. So what we've started to do, um, Haley and I, is we're taking the information from Maze. So that was what enabled to us to give you finally the Excel data that you had wanted the initial mm -hmm. um, for the initial request. Um, the problem is there's still <coughs> canned um, Maze reports. So some of this information is in three different reports. So it's a matter of trying to combine it all together in mm -hmm. one report. Mm -hmm. And there was just a couple things I wanted clarified. Sometimes you ask for a street address and sometimes civic address. Most of the times, 90% of the time, it's the same. What happens with the street address, and we can get that readily from Mays, as opposed to the civic address, we actually have to call Mays to see how we can get it into a report, is it's also the mailing address. So for non-residents, the street address would be their address in West Vancouver or Whistler, uh, depending it, yeah, on Yeah, no, community. obviously I need the property yeah, address. so yeah. you need the, the civic address. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> the PID data, we weren't sure why you wanted that. I mean, we'll try and get it, but before we go to that effort, we wanted to make sure you... Only if it's readily it. available. Okay. I, it, it may make it easier to uh, automatically parse, P-A-R-S-E, it into a, a geographic database, okay. which, because those parcels are probably identified by PID. Okay. And we have found out that the 2017 information, um, like most years, won't be available until late 2016, probably early 2017. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, as previously discussed, we have an idea that they're going to be higher, but the mm -hmm. actual numbers we won't get. Um, but that's basically, um, I just wanted to give you the background that it isn't just push button reports. We can definitely get this information, but it takes a bit, little bit longer. So, with regard to the first question, what are the roles that have positive land plus building assessments? Um, they basically, like why have they become inactive? One of them, it was an inactive because it was a small piece that um, joined another piece and just became a new roll number. And the second, it was a manufactured home that got moved to another <coughs> folio. So essentially, it was just sort of a combination and that's why um, those two roles went down to zero. They but there were only two that did that? Yeah, there was only I two. thought there were more than two, but yeah, so there were only two? Just, okay, great, thank you. And then the eight lowest value roles, um, you wanted information on that. Three were just utilities, and it tends to be just cables underground, so it's just minimal value, and the utilities pay us grants in lieu. Yeah, so I thought that would be revenue. a utility type. Yeah, uh, one was the CN lot, um, two were just empty <coughs> lots um, in Crystal Falls that essentially are probably unbiddable. One of them was one of the ones that went to tax sale, and it's actually it did actually pass okay. over to the person. One was, um, it's a small part of the strata, and it's like a furnace room. It's just, it's the way it's separated. It's just a small part of the strata. And the other one is a business. So, um, Okay, so I eight. guess the, the question is, and are you satisfied that those values are correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're minimal values, and they're just sort of obscure pieces of property. So with regard to the other requests, um, like I said, we do have to contact Mays for some of the information and run the reports, but we hope to get that to you. Well, we really can't start working on it until after the election, but within a couple of weeks. If that, that's, okay. yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take it when I can get it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, these sorts of things, I don't know what I'll find out until I f see what it is, but I, I even just what we had, I found pretty interesting. I sent counsel around a sort of an analysis mm -hmm. that I really was most interested in the histogram of where our property prices are. Why? Because I wanted to see where there may be gaps. Mm -hmm. And there's clearly a gap in, in the, starting at about a million dollars and lower. Mm -hmm. uh, even a million dollars is is a pretty hefty price point. Uh, you know, if we want young families to start thinking about moving to Lions Bay, uh, there's a gap in in the four hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollar range. Forget about the average property value of whatever mm -hmm. it was, one point three. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the median was quite different to the average tells me that the that the high value properties do skew the average. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they 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 bat higher than their weight. If that's so. Even so, even as it was, it was very interesting. Okay, thanks. So uh, we don't really need a resolution for that if it's coming. Uh, there's no particular mm -hmm. something, so uh, we'll just take that when it comes.
Now, I did actually spend quite a bit of time marking this up, but as soon as I didn't bring it, that's my bad luck. Uh, and we'll have to defer that part. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up, Peter? Uh, at this point. Uh, there was one that I will just remember because I printed out the collateral for it. It was a signage one, and uh, you said it was complete, but it was not that signage I was talking about. The signage I was talking about was that covered by, thank you, this, this email, which were certain obsolete, <coughs> ugly, wrong placed signs, just to bring that, just to uh, bring it back together. So I don't, uh, what's, what's the, what's the request? The request is, can we execute that? So what do you mean by execute it? I have to re-familiarize myself with the email. Wherever there's a verb, do it. Remove, replace, clean, mostly remove. Well, there's, there's a variety of different signs that... Uh, it's been resolved, but mm -hmm. it, it's, it says done and it's not done. I can't remember where it is. Uh, you want me to quickly find it? Done might simply mean that there was a resolution... Yeah, okay, that, yeah, maybe. That... Uh, but maybe it wasn't done. I don't know. The resolution might have been, you know, going to do it. And so, therefore, it's done. Sorry. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that we want to remove signs without replacing them where necessary. And well, those are the without, ones. Without a parking plan or other uh, standard to which we would be. <coughs> None of these uh, are parking related? That one is. So is that, that one. So is that one. Yeah. So. If so you read the text, says, if you read the text, it says, can we not have two no parking signs within six feet of each other? Simply because it looks like we don't take care of things. And this is actually the sign. Watershed area. We had this discussion this afternoon. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not a watershed area. So how are well, the two we don't know. going to deal with this we one? That. Sorry, say again. Wait, is this one a done or is this one? I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it back next Pretty time. Park? Good. Yeah, let's Thank you. move on. I just wanted you to point to point out that the one that you were talking about was not this one. Okay. Yeah, you can have it. Okay. Right. So that uh, saves a lot of time. Sorry, guys, for not bringing my notes on it. I think that's the second time I've done that. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's very sad about that. I, I may be able to find them. No, I didn't. Know. Okay, let's move on. Um, municipal grant report, page 25. Pam. Yes, I believe this was presented in my absence, and Council had a question, which I did respond to yep. um, by email, but again, I'll repeat. Um, I'd asked for the due date this year to be December 16th as opposed to December 31st, but even when it was December 31st, um, the financial statements weren't available. We always asked for the most current, and I actually found the most um, kind of useful piece of information is they're requested to give a breakdown of how they spent the previous year's grant. And, um, and some of them do just project their financial statements up to December 31st, so I felt that by changing the due date, um, it wouldn't really be a deterrent in terms of our ability to analyze the grants. Yeah, I think we didn't necessarily appreciate that. Uh, other than that, there was no, no issue with the report. Is that correct, Council? No, although the general commentary was <coughs> early payment of the grant, that the grant number using the last year numbers on the five-year budget, so rather than waiting till the 2017 five-year plan starts yeah. and we're along the process, <coughs> we should be able to accelerate the process, and fortunately you weren't here to answer that one. Okay. Um, yeah, generally, um, I have talked to the grant recipients about this, and because it's 12 months between payments, it's usually only an issue the first time someone's asking for a grant, like the seniors last year, and we were able to make some accommodations for them. But generally, um, after that initial, it always goes 12 months between the grants, so the fact that it's not paid until usually April is usually isn't an issue. From a and cash flow perspective. From a cash flow perspective, exactly. Yeah. And I actually had a question. Last year was the first year in a while we had asked um, the municipal grant recipients or applicants to come in and do a presentation. And I just wanted to know if council felt that was useful, if we should do it again this year, or we basically put aside one um, CSC meeting to have them pay. Anybody asking more than $1,000, we generally had them come in and do a presentation. If you did speak about it. Uh, Ron, remind us what we said. 
Uh, I think we recall that there's probably only four groups that uh, received that amount of which the events committee leaves off. So there's the arts council, Seniors. the play school is should be small if anything, and I can't even go down. I mean, the seniors, I guess, would be the next one up. Yeah. So I think the four of them would represent probably 90% uh, of the stuff, so I'd probably like to hear the four of them. Yeah, I think it's good to be connected, so we know where the money's going and who's doing it. They might be missing that uh, thing. Oh, well, the other thing, too, was, uh, Fred, this was yours on this one. Just steal your money. Um, uh, an emphasis on getting to apply for the... Uh, special status so they can get gaming grants. Yeah, they have to be BC societies. Uh, that's up to them. Uh, we did say that we want to encourage them to do that. Did we not say that we wanted to force them to do that? I think it was encouraged. We could go to force. Yeah, we could force them. Yeah, uh, well, then we don't have to give them a grant either. So, I mean... Uh, you know, I don't want to get, it. we're talking uh, about a small we, amount. Why do we pose this question when they're here? I think that's probably <coughs> the best approach. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Pam, if you can forewarn them when they come. Yeah, we'll be asking them what else are they doing to raise uh, gaming funds, gaming grant funds, yeah, BC lottery funds. Just to point out to you that uh, we just, maybe I told you this already, I mm -hmm. think I did. Uh, West Van Little League, that of which I was the registrar, we just got thirty-six thousand um, dollar gaming grant. Not insubstantial. Five hundred and fifty players, but still. Okay. You get something at the gym shorts to meeting. I no. always do. No. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Pam. So um, we'll take uh, the recommendation as the motion. Can I get a second on that? And any further discussion? All in favor of receipt of the report? Thanks. And opposed? That carries. <coughs> And moving on to your next report, Pam. Finance. Schedule. Finance work plan. So, this is the same schedule I do every year. I take in um, when the audit is, when our statutory deadlines are, and I do um, kind of a schedule. Uh, <coughs> and I break it into sorted by date, and what I find more useful is sorted by function. Um, essentially, this is quite high level. With regard to the budget, um, I've, under this schedule, the budget being adopted is actually two weeks earlier than last year. And I have some room in there, so I've scheduled like four mm -hmm. meetings to discuss the budget like we had last year. If we need additional meetings, there's actually room in the budget to do that. And I was able to manipulate the budget so that we didn't need special meetings for um, adoption of the rate bylaws. But we have that flexibility if we choose to have more budget meetings, then you know, we can have special meetings to still meet our deadlines. Um, I'm planning to present a more detailed budget schedule at um, a December meeting, probably December 20th, when Mayor Burr can attend. And it will also include the proposed budget process. And a big piece of that is the Public Works Manager will be working on a core services review, and that will feed into the water, sewer, solid waste, and public works budget. Because this year, um, since it's sort of my second full year working on the budget, we really wanted to take a close look at the operating budget, go back historically, see what we spent for the last three years, and try to highlight areas where we've been chronically over budget or maybe under budget, and sort of look into, delve into why. And you'll see when we do the third quarter review, which actually represents kind of the first stage of doing the budget, I flagged a few accounts that um, the Public Works Manager and myself are going to take a closer look at. In, in the prior year, we sort of focused a lot on the supplementals, which we still need to do, but I wanted to put a little more effort and time into sort of the preliminary budget that you see, taking a close look at it and try to find savings before it even comes to council for your first view of it. Okay, good. Council? So, <coughs> Comments? Uh, question. Um, it didn't seem like a whole lot of uh, offer about capital is in here, so you're, you're just planning on slotting it in as the dates come? I'm thinking specifically tendering and MFA deadlines and grants. Is that your plan? Um, actually, that's a good point. I don't have anything to do, anything in here in terms of the grant, um, with the grant application. Um, this tends to be more um, just the financial statements and getting the, um, making sure we're on track to meet our budget deadlines and our tax deadlines. 
but when it does, I guess when we find out if we're successful with the grant, we could go through and put in deadlines for that, which I would work closely with the public works manager. In fact, it might even be worth doing a separate schedule for that. This tends to be sort of our statutory deadline schedule, but I think it would be worthwhile, given the speed with which we have to get the project well, done. Well, to it save us worth. having to look at two places, I, I think that's a great catch. Yeah, we could. Yeah, I, I, very, I mean, the first one coming up is November 23rd, right? The, mm -hmm. the, uh, the first round grant yes. deadline. Yeah. Grant application yeah. deadline. Yeah, I didn't even think to actually put that on here because it tends, tends to focus more on the statutory, but yeah. that is another yeah. excellent <clears throat> purpose for a schedule, which we could you know, put in here as well. Just to completely stress this out with all our deadlines. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, let's have them all in, in one place yes. only, uh, only one level of stress. Mm -hmm. So, where I would, uh, am I. Uh, correct in believing that this five-year plan will be, for the first time, real budgets, or as opposed to just uh, what we did last plug, year was yeah. we it wasn't so much a plug. It was just it identified the number that we could have available for capital, but there was no point identifying that capital because we didn't have the results of the imp. So you are correct, and so it will actually take more time to do the five-year plan um, once we get um, locked in with the 2017 budget numbers with council then I will sit down and you know, map out what we'll be doing for the next five years. Yeah, I mean, I, I do not want to hold us to something in five years' time that we decided now, but what I do want to do is to make sure, and I'll be raising the point when we, when we get to the capital expenditure budget, um, I want work to start on January 1, on the strength of a five-year plan that, that's got some actual thought into it, so that we don't fall into the trap once again of waiting until July, August to start our our work for the year, because mm -hmm. that's when we had the budget. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the five-year plan is supposed to cover that, but I don't believe it has up to now. Yeah, it does cover it in the sense that it's a planning tool and it helps <coughs> you determine taxation and money to put into reserves, but we have the flexibility of when 2018 rolls around, we do have, we're not locked into what we mm. you know, said a year earlier, what we wanted for yeah, 2018. Sure. But in terms of the high-level capital, it is a great tool for outlining, um, you know, what capital we have to do. It's over actually five-year budget. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Uh, thank you, uh, Carl. Uh, and this is for uh, Pam to suggest the date when these two items might come. Uh, and that's hopefully the first one, which is easier to do, is a cash flow. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm thinking that I'm sure Mayor Burr would like to see that, so I think that would be the easier one. So a month today, more or less, for the 20th? Um, we actually, I talked about that after um, the last cash flow, and we thought and towards maybe the end of January, just in terms of <clears throat> doing your final year-end numbers, and then it would be more meaningful, and then until we actually know what we're going to budget for taxation, that is our revenue. So, I mean, I could sh show one earlier, but um, I even thought about bringing one to this meeting, and it was virtually unchanged. There was yeah, no was, new information. I was going to say nothing it's, would have changed much. It's really what drives it is the revenue. So it's yeah. when we start mm -hmm. bandying about different tax rates. I could even bring a cash right. flow with different scenarios depending mm. on the cash So that if flow. I'm matching that up then, so this is going to be your January 24th would be when that would go? Mm -hmm. But I would stress that it would be preliminary, because at that point uh, you'd just fine. be seeing that's the budget. Uh, cash flow. Then I would also ask that that's expanded to also include your reserve balance recommendations. Yes, that would be uh, part of my. Because the two of them will go hand in hand based on things we can't talk about just here. Um, yeah, the, that will actually um, is another example of what would come with my um, proposed budget process. Yeah. Reserves is a key part of that. Seeing what the balances are in the reserves. If all that came for the 24th, Council would be giving you pretty clear directions post-referendum, etc., etc. Yeah, okay, exactly. So um, th with those additions, Pam, and as, as I think Fred says, perhaps we can get, so they're not the actual sort of statutory stuff, the actual hard budget stuff, but the things that we must, that are hard deadlines pertaining to budget, like grant applications, MFA approval or submission. Why? Because that that really guides uh, the first day we can sh shoot our tenders, right now? I mean, we've, uh, Metro has to approve our loan application, is that right? You, know, the, you, you said there's, there's about 30 things in that timeline alone. Maybe you can run them in parallel, but in the same document would be very useful. Oh, yeah, no, definitely, especially when it's in the groupings. And actually, you've hit the other big one. I apologize. It was down here, and I didn't mention it. Dependent on our successful referendum, 
the loan authorization, or sorry, the actual going to the MFA for the debt would be a very detailed schedule because there's numerous steps we'd yeah. have to go through in order to attain, hopefully, the fall borrowing. The Good. fall borrowing of? You don't mean the spring borrowing of 2017? No, no we've, the deadline for that is in three weeks. Yeah. We, this, so That's we the actual that. funding, though. Yeah. No, yeah, that would yeah, be that's, the application the to Metro that then goes, sorry, um, to the, um, which then goes to the MFA for the spring borrowing. So yeah, no, no, but so the fall borrowing, that's that's actual cash, cash funding? Yes, cash funding. Okay. The deadline of which I, I know I've asked spring, that question. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So uh, I don't think we have a motion yet on receiving this report. Anything further? So I'll take a motion on the recommendation and a second. Thanks. Any further? All in favor of receipt and opposed? That carries. And Pam. Good quarter review. Uh, <coughs> so again, with the third uh, quarter review, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's almost the first step in the budget process. I take a very, very close look at our year-to-date actual results as compared to budget and flag things that may be tracking favorable or unfavorable. It gives our first indication of things that we potentially may have to rebudget. And um, like other quarter reviews, I've gone through and I've you know, put ex explanations for items that um, I had to look into. And then we have the detailed capital explanations, which I know is the most interesting to council at the end. So I wasn't sure if we just had any questions, if we wanted to go page by page, go directly to the capital. Uh, well, I certainly have some questions sure. on the income statement, but okay. just in the consolidated is fine. Uh, but anybody else want to go first? Uh, one question. Sure. Um, page 41 or 90, you've got other grants, and the uh, budgeted amount and the year-to-date actual is quite a bit different, so what didn't come in? Or are we still waiting on something? Or? Um, yeah, the bulk with the other grants, it's all grants other than the small community grant, and it's the Build Canada. Oh. So, um, again, it's a little misleading on the consolidated. I should probably put the explanation there as well. I've explained it on the water. And um, that um, the Build Canada, which we'll discuss the status of that when we discuss the capital. So that's the in and out from previous year's grant? Um, it's basically we budgeted the full amount expecting all the Build Canada yeah. projects yeah. to be finished this yeah. year and we only... So um, that's the unfinished amount. So that's basically the yeah. unfinished okay. amount and there's explanations for that. Yeah. As well, what's in there is the gas tax funding is considered a grant. So we've only we received a second 50% in December. Hmm. So um, so we're on track to be, with the exception of you know the Build Canada explanation, we're on track to be on budget with that. How do we how do we budget for a grant that we're hoping to get but we don't know that we're going to get in in any given year? Can we only not always do it after the fact? You budget if you we we actually had to do that with the Build Canada grant. We budgeted for it on the anticipation that we were going to get it. We budgeted the capital that we were going to spend yeah. with the grant. In this case, we were successful with the grant. And if we if, had not, and we been? will do this. And then you have a budget amendment and you just remove it. So you go on the assumption that you are going to get the revenue because you're essentially planning your capital. Good example is this year. Um, we will budget the grant we hope to get um, in the budget process. By the time we finalize the budget, we'll probably know if we're going to get it. But I go on the assumption we will be successful because it allows us to slot in the capital and then slot it into the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And then you just do a, it's just a, almost a technicality if you're yeah, it's unsuccessful. A housekeeping thing up there, yeah. you, but you do have to do a budget amendment if you are unsuccessful. Yeah. Okay, good. So that, that is how that's done. Okay, well, that was my first question. And then my only other one on the on the income statement was the public works number. That's only 46% of the budget. What is that, is that money still to be spent? And I being well, totally that's that's like Parks and Rec, if you add them up, it might kind of come I, I, I noticed Parks and Rec was quite separate. low. Yeah, Parks and Rec is a, a separate. It's, um, let's see. One of them is the, um, this is one of the things we flagged, is the um, contract services. That's um, an amount that we've, for several years, we've been under budget on. So it's one of the things that... Um, um, nine, I'm going to take mm -hmm. a closer look in the, uh, the budget process. Salaries and benefits are, 
I think I explained our overall um, on budget. If you look at um, the utilities and parks and rec and public works, we just we budget the total salaries and then we allocate them to the de different departments and we'll be adjusting that this year based on actual because parks and rec for the last couple of years has had a higher share of the revenue. I'm yeah, sorry, but in this case, expense. But in this case, we've way underspent our budget by more than half. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that contributing to that is salaries and benefits. Oh, misallocation. Be, yeah, misallocation should be at 75%, okay. and that we will be under budget on the professional fees quite substantially. I mean, we do have some of the savings from the imp in there, but when I looked at the prior years, we've been tracking favor on that for a few years, so we want to take a closer look at the number because it may be a budget number we can reduce. Okay, that's good. And, and then the interest payments, um, that's just a timing. The second large interest payment comes yep. with our November payment. I assume as much. So, should be 75%. Yeah. But it's so in summary, we will be under budget on this, um, but not this under budget. <laughs> yeah, so the water fund number that's at 62% of budget, that's just a timing thing because uh, that's, well, should that not be 75%? Well, again, the water, very similar. That, again, has an account under professional fees contract services. We have some savings from the imp in there of $10,000. But this is probably the largest account, the, the largest favorable variance we've had in the last couple but of years. So it's real savings, not, uh, not just waiting no, for something real, to happen. No, these are real savings, but we're taking it a step further. And we're not, this is what I meant when I want to take a closer look at the operating budget yeah, as well as the yeah. supplementals. That might be a number we can reduce. So what is the nature of that savings, now? I'm not sure. It's a savings that's been there for two or three years, yeah. uh, ongoing. On water. On water. Uh, On professional services. consulting fees. Yeah, I guess. consulting fees. So hiring engineers to do what? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And we never did. No. There's yeah no record that I've found of of you know standard engineering hires to do standard. I think there always was sort of a twenty thousand dollar number yeah, in there, but twenty or thirty grand. Number. But it's not standard, this kind of number. Yeah. Not that kind. Of number. No, it's a bit higher than that. Is it, it was, yeah. And um, I looked at it closely last year, but again, um, we're sort of in the transition time when our pub former public works manager was leaving, so now, yeah. nine, I want to take yeah. advantage and really look at it and just budget what we need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because this particular revenue number is raised from a fee, not from uh, general property taxes. Mm -hmm. And I will just point out again that Lions Bay has by far the highest fees in the province, and I mean by far, but, you know. We're forty percent higher than the next highest uh, uh, community with fee, simply because we're billing water through a fee, mm -hmm. and so if we can be saving forty thirty eight percent. Pam, when you do your next thing with us, uh, in the the numbers, you know, I, I this was after nine, but certainly we here approved this budget, which would have been north. It's at the three quarters. It's. Uh, but sixty thousand dollars, of which we spent twenty round numbers and twenty one in twenty fifteen. So I think a little more granularity next time out for the difference. Of You're talking about planning and development. No professional, professional fees. This is the big swing in this thing. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. uh, so. Are you looking specifically page, in the water budget? Yeah. Public works. Yeah. Page, what page, page is that? Page fifty one. Public works. That's in, uh, item number two. That's on the right hand side. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it's so light and certain, it's just oddly light without going back, you know, the eight months to figure out why we said yes. Yeah, and, and the maintenance number, the same argument? Or did we just not need to maintain at the same level that we've been used to? Because of better uh, so, scheduling, but I mean... That's going to be handled. You know what, I'll tell you what, there's a couple of big uh, uh, staff uh, injuries that have reduced the number of hours that we've had for maintenance. Right. So, so that's a bad thing. Yeah. We're going to have to recover that another time. Yeah. I, you know, why, why don't we, if you could give us a couple of bullet points next council meeting on these two categories. Well, actually, I, I'd prefer if it's okay to do as part of the budget process because okay. we've looked at it closely and we don't really know the answer. I suspect okay. we just have to correct the budget. In 2017. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a good answer. There were yeah. two flags that we. Um, well, nice and, and but, a partial answer. Well, I think with the maintenance, people. the core service review will, yeah. instead yeah. of just okay. saying yeah. this is what we budgeted all these years for maintenance, we're going to actually figure out how much we need for mm -hmm. maintenance. So and by doing that core service review, there actually may be some accounts where we have to budget a bit more, but that will be offset by accounts where we budget less. We have, in our final analysis, run a surplus for the last three years, have we not? An operating surplus. Yes. For, for this reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and that's not good. Yeah. And we will fix that. We're yeah. committed to yeah. doing that. And yeah. that's why, like I say, this, this is really my second go around with the full budget, and yeah. that's one of the reasons why the whole budget, it's not really delayed, it's just um, council isn't seeing the preliminary budget as soon as they would because I want to do some in-depth analysis of it before I present it, rather than just taking the prior year's budget and basically concentrating on supplementals. Supplementals and capital are important, but we need to look at the core budget as well. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear you say that because uh, we, we have done that the last two years. We've just sort of built on the previous yeah. one. So, yeah, if we can do a bottom-up, so much yeah. better, right? Yeah. It helps because I've been here for two years and now, yeah. you know, Nye's been here for six months, so we understand the accounts more mm -hmm. when we look at them and what makes up them. What about a balance sheet? Yeah, get a balance sheet at year end. Um, we, we just, there's really, I mean, I, the cash flow, the cash is about the only item that really... Um, and how granular will that be? In other words, can, will I be able, for example, to show any future fire service partners uh, what we have invested in our fire department? Mm -hmm. No, we will. It will be that level yeah, of... Yeah, well, we're changing the segmented um, to isolate the fire so that on the segmented note, actually in the financial statements that are published, we will have a breakdown of the fire expenses, plus an additional, more in-depth that shows, because um, I am restricted by um, gap, by what I can show on the segmented note, but we can also look in terms of staff time and, and what, you know, what the fire department truly costs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, with the allocation of, uh, of operating costs, but it's the uh, it's the assets that I really would like to know. Not only the depreciated value, but the acquisition yeah. cost as well, yeah. of course. And I did send you information on that from UBCM, but we can, um, we'll, we'll update that for you. Yeah, but that was only expenditure. Okay. No, the capital as well. Did I sent you? you the TCA, yeah. I can send it again. I'm drawing a complete yeah. blank. Would no, you mind? Okay. No, no. Not oh, okay. I'm sure I'll find it. But at year end, that we, we okay, can definitely good. show the breakdown of this is what the fire assets are. Okay, so that's good. Thanks, Pam. Anything else on the operating um, expenditures and revenues? So let's move on to the capital expenditures then. That starts on page 55. Um, Nye, no, this is mostly to you. Do you want to talk to anything here? Why have we not spent, uh, why have we not got our uh, SCADA uh, communications thing in yet? Carl, I've got a series of X's on these ones. So, uh, <laughs> well, I could just address the X ones. <laughs> uh, so the uh, the mag, um, the safety improvements in the PRV, uh, those dollar amounts, and the Harvey. We basically the balance on the mag is for the installation of the infiltration gallery. Yep. And um, we have. Uh, committed to doing that next year. Uh, Haley has um, submitted a an update to Build Canada indicating that we will be uh, seeking an extension and uh, seeking to repurpose the Harvey funds as well. An extension? I have been led to believe the three or four year validity left on the grant. Um, for, the, for the Harvey grant, uh, we will need more time. Okay. Uh, let's hope we get it. Uh, so just to remind you, Ron, this was, you know, uh, Nye uh, put a hold on it until uh, this had been reviewed a little more technically, and it went through the IC. There were some design changes that we asked for, which was uh, now in, in train. Will this budget be sufficient to install everything that was called for? The, the balance of the budget for the infiltration gallery is accurate. There's enough funding in there to incorporate the infiltration gallery and the additional pipe work that we've asked for, that the IC asked for. Okay. The intake road um, uh, improvements, we are waiting for Creus to come back with a revised or a, a new design to shore up the uh, the dam, the, the weir, yep. and a cost estimate for that. So Ron, you've, you're the only guy here who doesn't know about this. Uh, essentially the road it's just not feasible. Given the challenge, the design was not going to be adequate. So they pulled, uh, they very rightly and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for, not honorably, but, but pulled it. They, they, they said, don't do that because it's not going to be adequate. So now, unfortunately, this being federal and provincial grant money uh, that we'd either have to return or repurpose, it seems that we can indeed repurpose it for a similar, within the mm -hmm. scope of the award, by essentially fixing the weir at Harvey. 
uh, whether that's with a, it's a, a similar infiltration gallery design or a hardening of the lip or who knows. The, the initial discussions I've had with Creus have been, uh, have revolved around uh, constructing a new dam or a new weir on the front of the old weir. So using the old weir as the back foundation, putting in a new weir in front of that, so thickening the wall, providing more support, and coring through to provide a sluice gate, a washout, uh, to clear the, um, the area behind. So, and that, once we get some sort of design and, and idea on that, that will come forward to the IC for review. And you think we'll be doing that for 170000 Um, I think it's possible. I think that um, Chris, uh, I don't know if you recall, but when they met with the IC, the cost for a complete replacement of the weir was two fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about is using the back of the weir as a foundation yeah. and building a form on the front and pouring concrete and steel. So I think it's doable. Yeah, it's just that I remember that in total cost of that project was a third, 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 mm -hmm. and then we had to top it up with another seventy thousand dollars of additional lines bay money over and above our one third uh, contribution, right, Pam? 60,000, 69,000, I seem to remember being a number. 62,000? You thinking of the money we had to come up with the shortfall with the DFA and the anchor bolts not being covered? Yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah that wasn't the Build Canada, that was the, the DFA funding that we, um, that we got for um, just mitigation of the slide. Uh, not this yeah, project at all. Not this project okay, at all. so there's not money to be recovered out of this budget, is wh where I'm going no. with that. Yeah, no. okay. Just our one third. We have to spend that 169. Yeah. Yeah. So, for my mind, for all this stuff, we're kind of Work different, rep, cash neutral, mm -hmm. more or less. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Repurposing. Yeah, it's a good result. Uh, yeah. It yeah. actually oh, ends result. up. I yeah. I don't think anybody really knew what the scope of the road repairs what was, but when I saw what it was that was proposed, we were going to get. Didn't you know, in the tens of meters of road improvement, yeah. it was a better go path. Yeah. 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 Um, the hydrants and the PLV screens and filters, the, uh, the discussion uh, and council agreed to repurpose the funds for the hydrants to PRV work. That work is scheduled. Uh, we've had one visit uh, already. Um, second visit happens this Friday. Uh, and then there'll be a third visit. Upon completion, uh, the invoice will be uh, provided to us. So I anticipate that that invoice will come towards the end of the year, uh, once the work is completed. Uh, on the second page, the uh, SCADA install robust primary. This is, my understanding is, is that this was submitted to conduct a, a study on a radio path or alternative communications. Correct. My experience with SCADA is that any sort of radio or cell uh, communications will cost significant dollars and in a community such as this and, and we did the same in West Bend uh, wherever possible we used broadband uh, Shaw Underground or TELUS um, to provide internet connectivity uh, and collect that data yeah we know that when's the project starting we're waiting for an estimate from Shaw still. No, th this this budget item was for the study, not for doing it. And we went round and round, this was before your time, we went round and round and round about this. Council wanted to know what was the best approach. Right. This wasn't doing it. Because uh, the budget item was going to come in 2017, once the study had told us what the right thing is. And it had a much larger component about improving the cell signal in Lions Bay, potentially. Okay. Uh, or repeater stations, or t retuning of existing antennas. We didn't know. Right. And the idea was that uh, a communications consultant was going to tell us for 18 and a half. Yeah, you're not going to get a communications study for 18 and a half. The, uh, you're probably looking more uh, at around 35,000. Okay, well, that was the budget item. That's what we approved. So I don't know okay. what we can and can't get for that, but... The, the yeah, I can, I can put out a tender for that. I'm just... Uh, well, you need to review the, the budget approval uh, item. It was not to get Shaw Cable to go and install internet. I'm not saying that's not the right solution. Right. It's probably cheaper. 
But the only reason I'm pushing back on this is that we have a bigger fish to fry, and that's the cell signal in Lion's Bay. So, I'm not sure how you want me to proceed with this. Uh, well, the first thing you need to do, I think, is check what the actual, you know, approved Project item was. For? Yeah. Okay. And uh, if necessary, bring it back, and maybe we can consider just repurposing those funds to go exactly the route you propose, because. Yeah, it was said at the time that cellular uh, data is that expensive. Whether that was because of our terrible cell signal or not, I don't know. Yeah. But I know that a cellular modem is $389. So that's a heck of a lot of additional uh, on top of it if it's going to be 30000 for a cellular modem. Yeah, I will bring back a report at the next council meeting. Yeah, it notice. shouldn't be. I, I don't, yeah, who the vendor is of that study, I don't know. Pam, are you recalling any of this? I am. I know we went back and forth, and it was one of the ones that changed many times and kind of mm. on that note we're hoping when we do the supplementals this time that you know staff get involved and actually maybe to avoid this right almost like a small business case so we are very clear I mean it was just unfortunate with the turnover in staff and I think some things got lost in translation yeah. with SCADA so um, um, Nye's doing a great job of you know picking it up but it's not his budget yeah. no so doubt. I think yeah. that's the best approach is a and then I'll come back that's what it was the report but then yeah. that will segue nicely into the 2018 budget and then we can all be clear on what we need to be oh, 2017 so I'm ahead of year what we have to budget for the 2017 it, and this of course sorry go ahead it makes a lot of sense as Nye suggests to have a communications consultant come and tell us what's the best because it's changing it's mm -hmm. changing all the time mm -hmm. and you know looking at the, the actual hardwiring, laying a Shaw cable all the way down, or using cellular technology. To me, cellular technology wins out every time. But you know, the consultant have to tell us that. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not. You know. Don't forget that the other uh, angle on this is that we are going to be looking at some point for sponsored uh, flow metering in the streams, and then that data will also have to be gotten down into into our SCADA system. That I don't see shore cable lying, uh, laying an internet line up to the intakes. No. So, so you know, this was there was more to it than just uh, hardening the line that's currently draped through the trees yeah. that we all know about. That's just a dial-up uh, modem, ninety-six hundred dollar, ninety-six hundred board uh, U.S. robotics, literally. Yeah, exactly. So, maybe it's a two-part thing. But the study was to answer all these other questions. And so scoping it is, there's, there's a lot more. I've just given you three things that, that, right. that, that certainly I think uh, the IC and council were expecting to see out of it. I do, we went round and round and round. Did we discuss this in the IC or was it in council? I remember being a bit of a... Uh, I, think, I think we did have some contact in our conversation in the IC. We may want to just really look through those minutes because they'll be fairly comprehensive. Okay, enough on SCADA communications for now. Thank you. Rounding second base, keep going. Uh, let's see here. Um, fence replacement. Fence replacement. Uh, we are, uh, that's on our work plan to do this winter. Uh, work shard roof, roof repairs are complete. Um, the uh, Bayview Road culvert design, ISL, is working on preparing base plans and initial drawings for that. Did they win the tender? Yes, they did. Okay, so yeah. that's ongoing. It's just late yeah. starting. Yeah. yeah, we've already had two two meetings, uh, an initial kickoff meeting and a, um, a staff meeting. Uh, we're proposed, we're, we're scheduling a second staff meeting to talk about drainage. Sure. Um, the rest are small. Uh, and this will be gotten gotten to in good time, I yeah. assume, the bridges so the, and roads. The engi engineering review, um, the repair methodology, uh, we are planning to get engineers out to review. Um, uh, the big one is, Ron, I know you, you would have flagged this one. Um, 13,000 was, was, I think was we would ho hope to have spent that by the summer. Uh, and it's now the winter again. Yeah. What so happened there? I, I'm not sure what the 13,000 was for. 13,000 will not get you a set of stairs. Um, we had talked about installing uh, hand dryers in the bathrooms and doing some other electrical work. Yeah, and this coming back. That. This was outside work. And coming back 
uh, this budget cycle for the capital to do a complete uh, plan for the Lions Bay Beach Park. With sort of the full costing, so yeah. I think that was when I started. We realized that thirteen thousand wasn't enough. I think we talked about that at the mid-year review as well. We d we did this, um, so yeah okay okay I, I'll yeah we did with purchase uh, cedar planks etc um, for repairing the wooden parts of the fence that were were coming down, um, but you won't see that staff time on here. Yeah, I mean this original project was slated to be Ron eighteen thousand twenty one thousand. I think we. Our nose and went down to 18, 20 grand, something. Like and then we said we went even lower, continually cutting back on the scope to what you see here boat space refurbishment, removal of wood entrance and wood stairs, stair replacement and guardrails for 13,000. And we said, well, okay, if that's all we can get for 13,000, I'm now hearing you say, I'm not saying, I believe you, but right now we've got nothing. Yeah, for so having taxed an, an extra percentage point to raise that 13,000. Staff have done some work, operations uh, work that's done it doesn't come out of capital. No, no, I know. Right, so. But we approved and taxed the village $13,000, which hasn't been spent. We did, and I think our learning from that is we kept knocking it down and there wasn't a proper analysis done of what okay. the true cost to do that, and that's what we're proposing. We'll do, there'll be a rebudget, so we won't retax, but we will come back with a proposal with, you know, with council's approval. This is the different things we can do, and this is what they will actually cost and just make sure we budget the right amount. Because I think that was the struggle again with the transition with the managers and I came in and I'm explaining these budgets to them and it's sort of like, we want to get all that done for that. And we realized uh -huh. that, that there wasn't a correlation between the dollar amount and the tasks. And that's another improvement we'd like to make with this budget. When we do the supplementals, we get the ideas, but take it a step further and have staff involvement in terms of determining what the true cost is. Well, this is. certainly, I mean, this was, these numbers all came out of staff. I mean, yeah, how we yeah, were did. persuaded that this yeah. was the number for that, I don't know, but we, Well, I think it was, it was a convincing. higher number, yeah. and then we just kept knocking it down and knocking it down. We were getting close to the budget deadline, and that's, you know, Maybe we that's probably right. dropped the ball, is that there wasn't a correlation between, we, we were cutting the number, but not necessarily cutting the work. And that's a learning that we, I hope to improve that this year. Be a bit more accurate with some of our supplemental and our capital well, budgets. Pam, I think we all share in the failure here because I mean uh, the council's you know not, neither here nor there. I'm more or less is the right number is the right number, but I mean to Carl's other point is I mean we taxed for it number one, and what we taxed for we didn't get, and now we're going to do it again. So uh, it's part of the frustration in, in approving a budget and not having the issue executed. So I think that's the bigger. Mm -hmm. in the whole thing. And that's where the rebudget will come in. We'll rebudget the amount so we're not taxing for it again. Yeah, but if we just keep deferring to another year. I mean, eventually we're going to essentially have billions of dollars in the bank and no project to show for it. Maybe you, that's an exaggeration. You have some serious problems at Lions Bay Beach Park with the condition of the uh, landscape retaining walls that are holding up the playground structures, the stairs. Hello. The boat ride. I know. I, right. We've been saying that for years and we never could budget the, the right number. Thirteen is not, no, not enough to even start. No, but that was, this was supposed to be a few cosmetic things, specifically those rotten stairs. So you're not going to get a replacement of rotten stairs for 13 grand? Okay, well, we were told we would. Okay. May so, I suggest we let you finish? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're going to hold you responsible we, for the fire underspending as well. We've, we've mentioned this before. We will be coming back with a better budget number for the park on the retaining walls, the stairs, improvements that are required and, and the true cost to do them. There's, there's a council scope request about two and a half years old now okay. in terms of the, the stone steps down to the beach, uh, railings, um, a bunch of stuff. Trees, walls, posts, yeah. everything. Getting rid of uh, obsolete, dangerous play structures. It's all there. Okay. Uh, how you'll find it, I don't know. I'll, I'll switch it on. I remember you. going down there with a Please. camera and taking pictures of the condition of the wall right. when we first started. And, you know, some of that stuff was done. Okay. But the thing is that, yeah, the walls are in need of a lot of repair. Yeah, I know that staff did do some repairs <coughs> to the boat, uh, boat yeah. rack, the kayak racks. Uh, so that's been taken care of. If I could just mention uh, my recall of our last budget season is we were hacking and slashing ruthlessly. So. I think this is just a victim of our slashing and hacking, but maybe we better be a little more thoughtful next time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, even slashed and hacked, uh, I'll get down to the bottom line, we spent 187 of a $570,000 budget. My comment here is, damn it, in big red capital letters. Because whether that was coming from reserves or taxation, 
we just didn't do it. And if that's a resource issue, we need to hear about that. If you just don't have enough people to execute capital projects, tell us. Because it's no good allocating $570,000 and only spending $187,000. Yeah, that's somewhat misleading, Carl. I mean, with the projects that we're retooling that we haven't spent. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Uh, but, okay, so that I'll take off 200 your theme, That said, your theme is correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Even taking off the 200 it's, it's still... Big. Still lots of work that... And, and yes, we can rebudget so the money doesn't disappear. So but, but we'll never catch up. Yeah, understood. Send my beach fix scope. Please. Uh, so just let's hear from you, Peter. Uh, $60,000 of fire budget has not been spent. Thank you. Uh, I think Could the yeah. comment on the second from the last item, I'm not yeah. aware of, but I, I, must I have met, I, I'm meeting regularly with the fire chief, and um, he's, several things are out to tender now, in the anticipation he still will spend it. Historically, they do spend it towards the... Um, Thanks for coming, guys. Towards the end of the year. Um, one of them was... Um, one of the WCB requirements, so I don't have right in front of me, the whole exhaust system, and he's got his three quotes in the work, and that's about $8,000, and the work's starting. So, um, again, I think it, that was a partial delay. I know there always seems to be excuses, but our staffing issue with the fire department over the summer, there was a delay, because ultimately all decisions go through him with terms of this. this um, yeah, fair enough. So, but the burn building, um, which I had flagged earlier, um, there's just steps that have to be taken prior to... Um, us being able to do any work on the burn building. So I have got uh, requests into Flynn Row on that, um, and hoping to have something back from them shortly. We'll follow up again next week. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's we, lots we of reasons to be spending this money. It demonstrates progress. It dem demonstrates good management. It's a uh, prudent use of taxpayer money. You know, all that, all that stuff. I don't need to tell you, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's also an element that needs to be spent, uh, resourced in terms of, you know, an extra budget person, uh, an extra planning person, I don't, I don't Please make sure that we know about that because we can't, this is the third time I've seen this now. We just haven't spent our budget. Let's not budget it in the first place. Okay, anything else? Council? Thanks, this is very useful. Uh, I, th I think I speak for everybody. When, uh, the quarterly numbers just get, lets us keep an eye on things, check that everything's around 75% yeah. in this case. Yeah. Like I said, I, th I find with the third quarter, it's literally the first step in the budget process, yeah. and all the points we've made are very valid for <coughs> keeping in mind for. Yeah, and, and I think I uh, really look forward to seeing sort of a bottom, bottom up um, analysis because for the first time it'll be something we can actually yeah. buy into. Great, excellent, well done. So uh, let's have a motion to receive that report then, uh, according to its recommendation. Thanks, and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, nothing from the mayor, council. Thank you. Uh, just to quickly go over, uh, this is primarily Carl's My Remembrance Day. So you're going to an, I do an email thank you to the pianist, thank you. You are going to write the letter. The, the pianist done to the Page? Sue. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a little thank you in front of you that I gave you. Yeah. Yeah. And not the pianist. I uh, know. Pianist is electronic. You got her stuff. And Trudy and crew, you're going to deal with on the e-post. Yep. Uh, the remembrance quilt. Um, which seems like a pretty nice item. The issue is where to put it. Did and we send you a note asking you to think about that, Peter? Nope. No. Uh, I don't know what you're but about. size and uh, thoughts. Why don't we table that for the next one with where staff might recommend? Yeah. Okay. Just a quilt that was donated for Remembrance Day, where we could hang it. Uh, yeah, sort of a very nice sort of, you know, almost uh, memorial quality uh, poppy motif um, quilt. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, I think the other one which I've sent the email to, this is the one that we'd like to noodle. Um, 
the play school, preschool, preschool parents, um, they've asked for, um, electronically to me and Carl, that they would like assistance for the Santa's Breakfast, dearly loved, large attended event last year at the school. Um, I'm going to guess well north of 140 people. Uh, and so they're looking for uh, tables, chairs, uh, I believe they'd like that gratis, and they hold this, it escapes me whether it's a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, Sunday, but they would like public works, this is their big ask, I'm fronting them, they'd like public works to deliver the tables and chairs, I presume they'd break them down and public works would haul them back. My recollection from last year, when it seems like we were doing the same conversation, was that um, the parent group took the uh, tables and chairs on their own trucks to the school, set them up, broke them down, brought them back. I had put the deposit down uh, using my check, which all the tables and chairs came back, so basically the cost was nothing. I think for council to consider is, subject to uh, staff's advice on precedent setting, is this one, does works become involved or do we ask parents to do the heavy lifting, no joke intended, uh, do we waive the fee, I could believe those are the two items. Um, there's a few additional pieces. I think kind of going back to the municipal grant, when this happened last year, it partly involved um, the originally one at the hall and it wasn't available. I did suggest they put in a municipal grant application, but they said it wouldn't be necessary this year. So again, I think maybe we should insist that a municipal grant application be put in if this is going to be an annual thing to allow us to plan. Because again, with the short notice and being on a Sunday, uh, the tables actually aren't available until Sunday morning because the hall is rented out Friday and Saturday all day late into the evening for the quilting group and they use all the tables so they'll be in use until very late the Saturday night so um, the only way they can get the tables is to come and collect them first Sunday thing morning. Sunday morning and of course we wouldn't have public works do that because no. it would be It'd exorbitantly expensive yeah. Um, but I think I will, with Council's permission, normally we just put the municipal grounds out and people on their own violation um, submit them, but I think we might request that they actually put in a municipal grant application if this is going to be an annual and annual thing and request the tables. Um, uh, this is the play school group, right? They sponsor the Lions Bay Play School yeah, Society. I think yeah. In previous yeah. years, the events committee has done the Santa's breakfast, but in the last few years, it's been taken over by the play school group. To uh, just to fill in on this, uh, just to excerpt from the email, uh, while the YSL continues to do the day-to-day -day operations, the LBPA meets regularly to ensure the parents are happy with the current service provided. Right? We are also providing subsidies in order to cover the cost of field trips, extra staffing, and a general rental fee to allow for the extra children in the aftercare program. So they have recently voted to to continue with the Santa's Breakfast News, it is her fundraising. Okay, so well, I think it's fairly clear. They're going to have to do the heavy lifting. I think, given the, this information, it's they do the heavy lifting or not. Yeah. So then, did I not see in the new fees bylaw that the tables and chairs don't leave the hall? It was sound system, it doesn't leave the hall. Oh, only the um, we do have system. some precedent for the chairs. I mean, different people, I think, including yourself, have, um, we, do, we do rent out the chairs, a damaged deposit, and then there's a rental. Yeah, so they can be the taken off site. Yeah. Okay. Okay, th so that's fine. So then the only question is, correct me if I'm wrong, whether we want to waive the fee or not. Uh, yes, the actual fee, which precedent is we did that last year. I we did. Because I don't, I've yet to see a small channel damaged table or a chair. I'll be happy to do the deposit thing, that's so nothing. Uh, so I think they need to do the heavy lifting, unfortunately, very early. That's the only but that's, option. But that's their choice. Yeah. And In a way, it's a bit of a blessing. I mean, we don't have an option. Uh, and well, we're certainly not going to call our staff Well, in. they came to us at the last minute, so yeah. we're, we're a month ahead of the curve on this one. Just remind us, Pam, were they supposed to give us a pro rata refund of the municipal grant that they were given? Yes, Cash? and they did. They did? Yeah, they did. I think they envisaged that they were just going to go in the sunset on this, and this just... 
The other, the other thing to, to, that I'd like to point out is that there's no actual mechanism within the bylaw for waiving of fees. The only mechanism that you have uh, as a standard rule is uh, where you've got groups that have obtained municipal grants and have um, uh, in kind uh, and, and the fees are waived. There isn't actually a provision within the fee bylaw for you to, to actually give the money just back. Waive, yeah. waive grants. Yeah, sorry, and that would waive, be a bad uh, precedent. Fees. Well, then, chart, then council's decision would be to take it out of our pinky little budget and that's left pocket, right pocket then. Uh, yeah, or to to do a future uh, in-kind donation against next year's grant. They did get an in-kind donation for use of the library space, uh, which they didn't then use. They returned the cash portion yes. of the grant, but there was no real cash element to the in-kind grant that we made them. What was the in-kind amount again? Do you remember off the top of your head? It was a few thousand dollars because it was... Um it was originally for the whole year, but they ended up just using it from yeah. January to <clears throat> Well, let's to just June do it against that, that unused grant, which we never rescinded or waived, or it's just mm -hmm. currently unused. Mm -hmm. That was specifically for um, the for school care? Right. It wasn't really for the play school group. It was specifically related to the before school care. Is it, isn't that under the auspices of the play school group? Mm -hmm. It is the group, right, but it was targeted just for the before school care. Well, I don't think Red there's any. Pro if if the federal government will allow a grant to be repurposed, I think we can probably do that. Um, no, uh, the net result is they're not out of pocket. Yeah, and nor are we. Nor are we. So, I think that. And we haven't set a precedent. Then, uh, then this isn't the resolution material. If we're, or I guess, Peter, are we going to repurpose our own money? If that's the resolution that you'd like to make. Yes. Okay, you want to make a motion? Uh, I was going to say, maybe as part of the resolution, I don't know if this is appropriate for a resolution request that they do a municipal grant for next year for Santa's mm -hmm. breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Maybe even contingent. Okay, uh, conditional. Uh, this just references the Lions Bay Preschool Parents Association. Uh, Conditional to them submitting a 2017 grant application for Santa's breakfast. Well, that will be after the fact. Santa's breakfast happens long before the grant application. Well, like, Not long but, before, but, but before. The, he, by a very short time. Yeah. Um, that uh, council repurposed the uh, repurposed grant to cover the cost of tables and chairs for the function. No, draw on the grant. Oh, draw on the grant. Uh, would it be understood that the items are uh, removed and replaced by the residents? That's the motion. Can I have a second? Any discussion? No friendly amendments? Hostile amendments? I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Thank you, Ron. Will you communicate that to them? Uh, Pam and I will. Thanks. Yeah, she might have, I think. Okay, good. Anything else? Anything else for council? So we'll move on to committees. Infrastructure committee, Fred. Yeah, we've got the infrastructure committee's terms of reference uh, back here. We've, uh, we've changed the meeting dates to the uh, fourth Monday of each month, and uh, uh, Peter took the opportunity to tweak our terms of reference, uh, make it a little neater, tidier, cleaner and I think a much better job. Um, it's gone through the IC, there's been no objections to it. We're all in favor of it, now it's just up to council to approve the amended terms of reference, if that's your pleasure. And I'd like to make a motion that council approve the amended infrastructure committee terms of reference. Motion's on the table, can I have a second? And any discussion? Uh, call the question, all in favor and opposed? That carries, thanks Fred. Okay, so um, we're moving on now to the Lions Bay Fire Rescue Monthly Report. Can I have a motion for a seat? Thanks, and a second. Any discussion? Uh, 33 members, pretty strong uh, part yeah. of the Army. Yeah, that's not bad. And they were, I think, pretty much to a man and a woman there on Friday. Yeah, a fairly significant number of MVAs with rescue required on the highway. Very wet, I guess. Some on the same day. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'll call the question, second in motion. Uh, all in favor of receipt and opposed? That carries.
Uh, resolutions, approval of grant application on table. This thing. Uh, in which uh, staff request our approval of applying for the grant under the water and clean water and wastewater fund. So this is drafted to meet the meet the requirements of the grant application process. You don't have to give a number. No. A dollar number. No. Okay. So, so the dollar number may change through the course yeah, of, of, of going through yeah. it. Okay. So I mean, this is the first time we've seen it. So is there anything that uh, we'll we'll be sorry we said yes to if we find out about it later? No. Basically, your your office wants to go ahead with the. Uh, application on with respect to water storage tanks um, and uh, PRVs as we've discussed and um, that um, council commits to its share of eligible project costs and, and covering any ineligible costs and to pay for its share of the project costs um, in the intention being from the proceeds of the loan authorization bylaw voted upon to be voted upon by the electors um, this weekend, um, or if necessary, from capital reserves supplemented through taxation. So if we got the grant and didn't get, um, we got a no vote, then we'd have to look to our reserves and top up if necessary through taxation or, or supplement uh, or reinvest in our reserves in due course through taxation, one way or the other. Um, and finally, that the projects couldn't proceed without the uh, fund, without the grant. Is this the fail-safe language that will turn heads at the, the province? And They're going to look at this and go, wow, these guys have it together. They've got an <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Structure, master or plan. everybody be doing what They're it is. They're ready to roll. Uh, yeah, but they won't be as good. Fantastic. That's what I want to say. That's what we were here. Okay, so uh, there's uh, there's a resolution uh, without a motion yet. Can I have a motion to um, a, what is it? Adopt the resolution or approve the grant application? Uh, you you want to move the resolution that's on the table. Okay, so that's the motion and a second. And any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? That carries. Thanks. And then. Uh, just to save time, I'll make the motion that Councillor Bain be appointed Acting Mayor, effective November 15th, 2016. That's today. Um, can I have a second? And any discussion? Having already discussed whether the word is acting or deputy, I'll call the question. All in favour? Opposed? And carries. And we'll now move to bylaws, the uh, Development Application Procedures and Fees Bylaw number 431 of 2011, Amendment Bylaw Number 509 of 2016 on table, uh, discussed at CSC this afternoon. Can I have a motion, please, for first, second, and third reading of the bylaw I have just stated? Thanks, and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, do I refer to the fact that uh, council made a recommendation to council? Yeah, I mean, just uh, basically um, to uh, introduce the, the bylaw. Um, the purpose of the bylaw is um, to uh, provide amendments to the Development Application Procedures and Fees Bylaw, number 431, um, so that we uh, introduce a preliminary review process for any applications dealing with OCP and zoning amendments as well as any applications dealing with development permits or development variance permits or subdivisions. Um, the current bylaw provides very little guidance for um, anyone looking to embark upon any of these kinds of applications and it also uh, provides very little guidance for staff. Um, so the uh, some of the new uh, provisions in the bylaw, uh, if you look at the consolidated version on page uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm looking at uh, page three of the bylaw itself. Um, we've got um, uh, provisions which, which provide for the, um, before an application can be made under the bylaw, uh, a prospective applicant must submit a request for a preliminary review of, of a development proposal 
and um, and then paragraph four sets out all the different things that will be looked at and will be expected to be discussed with anyone looking to uh, embark upon that kind of a uh, of an application. Um, the various different studies and the things that uh, will be required, um, geotechnical and otherwise. Um, so it gives it gives uh, potential applicants uh, an idea as to what's going to be required and, give, and lets them know what uh, work they have ahead of them, um, as well as um, providing a roadmap for staff. Um, Council has the ability to add to it by providing uh, policy guidelines to flesh out anything that needs fleshing out. Um, and then that can subsequently be looked at for interpretation of any provisions. Um, and uh, so this process must be followed prior to um, anybody uh, submitting or the approving officer receiving any, um, any such applications. Um, some tweaks were made to the provision that was in the bylaw for uh, extraordinary costs of any uh, overly complex uh, applications and as well as uh, as we looked at uh, this afternoon in the council strategy committee meeting uh, uh, fees specifically addressed to um, any development applications uh, whether it's OCP amendment zoning bylaws uh, or zoning bylaw amendments or subdivision applications um, so this provides us with um, um, the ability to deal with anything that comes along, uh, whether it's uh, the people who have just purchased lots uh, 60, 60 and 61 in Kelvin Grove, or um, uh, subsequent to uh, us being able to move the works yard to uh, Brunswick Pit, then looking at um, redevelopment of the public works site. Uh, we're setting ourselves up for um, potential development opportunities that are identified already in the OCP. Um, so yeah, that's what the intent of this is. Okay, good, thanks. That's a good summary. Just remind me, please, uh, does this apply to any development within Lions Bay or only a special kind? In other words, if somebody bought a normal lot, one of the 20 undeveloped or one with a house on it and that they wanted to demolish, does this apply to them? No, they would just presumably require a building permit. So what's, how do we distinguish that? Or how do they distinguish that? How do they know that some people this applies to and others it does not? Well, when they come in, uh, depending on what they're coming in with, um, they'll be told, um, yeah, it's a building permit process and here's our forms and applications, here's what you need to do. Or they'll be told that, um, okay, you're, what you're wanting to do is constitutes a subdivision or it uh, is going to require rezoning or, or what have you. Or so, OCP amendment. So, so then they'll be introduced to, to, the, to this process. So this is not something they're going to be able to research on their own off the website. They're going to have to talk to you. Effectively. This, this bylaw, wants, uh, you know, if council adopts it um, subsequently, um, then it will, of course, go on the website and as well uh, we will, as, I, as I've mentioned previously, I'll draft um, wording in more of a lay person wording in terms of uh, what this is all about and educate applicants as to what's required. Yeah, sort of a, a proponent's letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. With a circulation date of maybe when? Well, this will presumably come back to council at the next uh, meeting on December 6th. And... Um, and then we'll get it up on the site and we'll develop some thank you some wording to go with it. Okay, good. Anything else? So I will call the question. All in favor? This is first, second, and third reading. Uh, and opposed? That carries. Thanks, Peter. Well done. I don't know how you put that together so quickly. Uh, or maybe it wasn't quick. I don't know how long you've been working on it. It was many, many hours, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> that I can do. Okay, um, we'll move on to correspondence, starting on page 63 from my red notice. Ron, you want to do the honors? Thank you, Carl. Uh, so it says page 63, bear with me for a bit. The first one, G1, uh, abandon a derelict vessels update. This is a note from Pam Goldsmith Jones, which updates us on that. No response. Item G2, will oh, five. Can I ask a question on this? She's got in it, uh, please reply to this message if you would like to be kept up to date on the progress. Um, are staff going to be updated? Or? 
Well, I certainly am being. Uh, she called me uh, Saturday, uh, inviting me to a thing the same day or the day before, I think, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, this was then. Th so this is a little uh, out of date because this Minister Garneau came, uh, made, made the announcement in Stanley Park, along with the 143 million that uh, the Prime Minister announced, um, part of which is this uh, receiver of Rex being refunded and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So. This is actually, it's gone one step further than this, and now it's, it's, it's in and funded. So um, we, we are in the loop, yes, and I can certainly keep you in the loop. I mean, this is important for us to do a tool in our arsenal for derelict vessels, um, although we actually have a more powerful tool in that we control the first thousand feet of our shoreline. But um, we are in captain. Uh, just for your information, it is a, a local issue for us because one of the marine boys on front of the beach, uh, when the boat owner was bringing, about to bring his boat over that day, he found a, a derelict, or it looked like a derelict vessel was on his mooring boy. So these people just find any place to hook them up and they had a difficulty with not being able to bring their boat over when they wanted Yeah, what are you supposed to responsibly do with somebody on your boy? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thank you. Uh, G2 Wood Fiber LNG. This is from the Concerned Citizens of Bowen. No response. Just information. Uh, G3. Uh, this is on page 72 of 90. Uh, the substantive part is that the, the group is asking for $1,000 or $500 per year for the next two years. So what's that all about? Uh, lower Mainland Flood Management. Yeah, but I mean, why are they asking us? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I uh, take it we've provided our portionate share each year. Yes, we have. It is in the budget. Which was 300 and something previously. Yeah. 323 previously. What do we get for this? It's quite an ambitious um, program uh, that they've embarked upon. And, um, you know, with sea level rise, it's uh, it's important work, I think. But does it in include the Fraser Valley or uh, does it include us? It's It's... It's... Us, West Van, it's every, everybody, in, you know, on the on the ocean front as well as um, the Fraser River Delta. It's just Fraser Basin Council is, is a fairly substantive organization that yeah. you know. This is yeah, this is the first I've seen. I know that we've paid this money up to now, but I never really understood what we're getting. And reading through this letter, I don't know what we get for our thousand dollars. Um, I went on their website to check out some of their information and I found out they are actually including us in their data as well as Squamish, so they are interested in House Island as well. Mm -hmm. So it's $1,000 over two years, so we have 323 in the budget because we didn't anticipate it going up to 500 yeah. and we'll correct that for next year if Council goes ahead. So it's $500 a year and we commit for two years. Okay, well, we'll, we'll debate that during the budget process, I assume, uh, but just remember that we had this discussion, uh, everybody. I mean, th these guys are spending big money, five, $5.2 million um, for something. It's nice to be able to spend that kind of money on reports. Um, but okay. 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 Resolution? Uh, no, let's do it during the budget. Budget? Done. Or yeah. do they need that sooner? And they'll need it sooner. Do they need a commitment yeah. now? Yeah. Uh, their invoice is conveniently attached on page 74. Yes, I know. I must remember that. Just send out an invoice. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, recommendation to pay the invoice. Okay, that's a recommendation. You're making that a motion? Yep. Yeah. Uh, second? I'm not... Okay, I just saw a second. Oh, that was close. It was um, close. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to uh, pay the Fraser Basin, Basin Council invoice for $500. And it's seconded. Um, any discussion? Uh, contrary motion? No? Um, do, I need, do I need to market this anymore? Uh, well, you, I mean, do you think it's a good idea? I'd be I interested do. To know. Uh, do. Here's what I see in the stuff. It's uh, They've got Sea to Sky all over their stuff. Uh, they're all over the place. Not just, it's Fraser Valley, Thompson, Caribou, Chilkoot, and Upper Fraser, the whole nine yards. Uh, so it's sort know, of a, a it's the whole deal. Mainland, it's yeah. the whole deal. So yeah. I think ducking out because we live on a hillside that's bigger than most. All right. Okay. Going? Yeah. Uh, seconded. Let's uh, call the question. All in favor? 
Thank you. And opposed, that carries. Thank you. Uh, G4, uh, literal letter from the Honorable Stephanie Cadu. Uh, page 76 of 90, and this is the adoption awareness uh, piece. Uh, I just want to make sure that I would draw your attention to page 76 of this, the uh, one, two, third, and fourth paragraph from above sincerely. Uh, and this is a bit of discussion here. I mean, there, I think it's a fairly obvious cause. Uh, the questions are, how do we participate and do we want to participate? And the two paragraphs I pointed out are, I can't see us doing Facebook or Twitter, directing members of our community to 1,000 families, BC. Uh, I think this is for you, Carl, to canvas. Yeah, I don't think this is something a local uh, government gets involved in. This is provincial. This is pretty and, granular. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I would suggest no action. Unless right, see some nods on that. You in, okay, yeah. thank you. We moved the NR on that one. Thank you. Uh, the G five human tracking, uh, page seventy seven of ninety. This is a private citizen. Um, uh, what they're doing, and. Uh, I'm going to suggest, um, I mean, the key piece for me here is, again, the third from the last pair. We would like to hear what proactive steps, steps your community has taken to address this issue of human trafficking. Yeah, I mean, I think this applies to communities with their own police force. So I'm going to yeah. suggest this is another response yeah. as well. Thank you. Then we get to the residents. Uh, R1 uh, from this resident is an uh, infrastructure opinion, uh, no response. Uh, R2, this is to do with trees and views. Uh, Carl has responded on this one. Copy to, I think, staff, I'm pretty sure. And staff, the chair of the tree committee. Yeah. And tree committee, so that one's already out there. I'm sure when the staff picks it up or the tree committee does. Uh, it would be responded, but in the meantime, the mayor has already answered. Uh, so in R for this table. Uh, items R3, R4, I think it would be fair to say that the CAO has already responded to this, and there is no response. <laughs> Item R5, which is um, a TransLink issue, and that's on... Okay. 88. Thank you. I'm just quickly scanning this. Um, I think you've already responded to this, Carl, on the uh, page 89 and working your way onto the committee. So he's got his answer as well. No yep. response. You notice how craftily I get outgoing correspondence into the uh, agenda? Uh, only if you're fast. Uh, I attach it to incoming. <laughs> and there you go. R6, which is from a resident on Sunset and her piece on page 90 of 90. Uh, I believe the last sentence is, I would appreciate, appreciate hearing from counsel if we can anticipate some action being taken in this regard, which I presume since the first one is that she's been in exchange with Nye, that she wasn't happy. Uh, yeah, so now you want to give us any story on this? <laughs> what, that for what have you done? Thank you. What do you say about that? Uh, we... Um, I guess there's, there's some history to this particular um, issue, and um, the uh, that reverses again. The, the neighbor, the neighbor um, has steadfastly refused public works access to the area in the past. Uh, has been very abusive to staff, uh, and uh, reviewing the matter this afternoon with uh, with Nye. Uh, you know, it doesn't appear to me that there are significant um, vegetation issues. There's a fire hydrant in the vicinity, but it does not appear to be compromised in any way by lack of attention. Um, maybe a little bit more trimming of, of the bush around it, but um, in terms of um, going the whole nine yards, um, it's at the end of the road, uh, cul-de-sac that um, you know, there's there's not really um, we, we've got bigger fish to fry, higher priorities, 
and this is a problem area that uh, the neighboring resident um, takes great issue with. So it's a bit of a, a difficult one for staff to deal with, subject to uh, you know any comments that council may have with respect to the matter. So is this the public boulevard? It's a ditch. It's the ditch. It's the roadway and the entrance to Trudy's Trail. It's a trail. Yeah, so it's over those the, the highway barriers. Yeah. And a, another resident doesn't want uh, the municipality cleaning things up? Correct. The, the resident at the end of the street there. The one, adjacent, does the one, not want any the one adjacent to this resident? Doesn't even allow staff access up the road to, to visit our own water tank. Um, we get chased off. We get stopped in the middle of the street. Uh, verbal abuse, threats, chasing staff down the street. Well, so he so needs a, a he needs a, a letter. She, she needs a letter. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, messy. It's 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 not an easy matter. It's not going to be fixed with a letter, and it's in my opinion not. Um, of significant enough an issue uh, for us to go down that road. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand. It's not the one at the sunset parking near the notice board, the one that goes up to the tank. This is so there's no tank on the on the Trudy's Trail side of sunset. There is a a, a dilapidated old tank that's not in oh, service, down below phase the, six, yeah, which is yeah. above the cul-de-sac. There's nothing above the cul-de-sac. There's mm -hmm. there's a tank below. This is the Trail where it goes down. Down towards the tennis court. So, yeah, it's here. this is where it goes down towards the tennis courts. Oh, this one here. Yeah. But Trudy's trail is not on this map. That's interesting. Look for the tennis court. Yeah, this tennis court. Um, well, it, 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 actually, you've got the thing right. It's right where he went from the left, right, drive, yeah, yeah. right so there to there. There's the cul de sac. Yeah. So that's oh, you're right. No, sorry. Um, so that's defunct. Yes. The roof has collapsed. Um, it's it, it needs demolishing, but yeah, yeah. it's breeding mosquitoes. Correct. Typhoid. Yeah. Like, yeah. West Nile. Uh, this valve here is closed, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, a resident here, we won't necessarily ask exactly who, um, is causing eruptions. Um, well, that sounds purely administrative, but it does seem that we need to. Either are these the two Hatfield and McCoy residents? I haven't been here long enough to know who's the Hatfields and who's the McCoys. So Pick one. <laughs> the must be one of them, then. Once they don't get along well. I, I imagine so. Okay. Um, but from an administrative management perspective, I, my recommendation is to do nothing. Okay, so, I mean, so the complaint is that the ditch along this side of the road, and this is a very wide piece of boulevard here that belongs to the, the village, this wide green piece here, this is a mess, says Anne-Marie Halliday. And we'd like it cleaned up. Correct. But so we can't because we're afraid of being shouted at. I, 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 would, I would hesitate to agree with the, the characterization of it as a mess. Um, it's not, it's not pretty, but it's not photos, terrible. But it, yeah, it just looks like natural environment, more or less. So it's a, it's a bramble road. choked ditch. You know, we, don't, we don't do our, our grade A uh, <coughs> road maintenance, you know, sweeping of leaves, etc., etc. Um, ditching and removal of moss from concrete barriers, what have you. So eventually, over time, concrete barriers that have moss growing on them will break down and disintegrate. Um, and roads that have leaves decomposing on them will eventually crack and things will grow out of them. But um, that's a long Okay, but th that's all very well. But so, uh, this is the first I've heard of this. So we're not doing it because a resident gets shirty with us. This is a fairly significant history, which includes um, involvement of the union. Um, as I understand it, I'm, I haven't looked into all the details, but just you know, sort of, I'm just trying to get up to speed. Mm, yeah, so, I understand. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's. I seem to remember uh, when we took office, uh, we were briefed that one of council's duties is is to ensure that staff is protected from abuse by the public. And I seem to remember this was the issue. Now that I'm thinking about it, Jim, uh, or was it Fred? I can't remember. Fred, you had something yeah. to say. 
Well, it sounds to me that it's, we have a harassment issue, and, and it, it, uh, it doesn't sit well with me that we just don't respond. Um, I mean, it's nice to back off and let it cool down, but you can't have staff harassed. And I'm just thinking if the work does need doing, maybe a visit by our police. Accompanied by the police, yeah. Would be in order and just tell them facts of life. This will not be tolerated. Would this be in your normal work location, right? Not really. Uh, the, the maintenance of the road? This stuff. I mean, I'm sure there's Well, there's a ditch there as well, and the ditch is pretty full of brambles and dead leaves. I, I remember now. Because I park along there to go hiking on Trudy's Trail quite often. Yeah. And it's not fantastic. I hadn't realized that's the reason. It does look a little... It's not terrible. Mm -hmm. The path is relatively open, well, but I think that's because the hikers keep it up. Yeah, I mean, as Peter mentioned, it's uh, not at the top of my priority, but it is something that uh, I would like to address uh, by, by potentially talking to this resident and trying to suss out what the rationale for Yeah, what is. the real issue yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. My concern, is, as Fred says, it's, he calls it harassment, I call it respectful workplace, same thing, okay, and our staff have we have to manage that and make sure that they're 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 not harassed or you know they're well respected yeah. in the workplace and if we can schedule around that so it avoids it that meets our responsibility. However, if it's eventually going to come up, it needs to, it does need to be addressed. And no, he's probably right. It's probably a good idea to try and suss out what the issue is really and see if we can deal with it. It's all coming back to me now. People have been complaining about the drainage in that area for a long time, and now I, now I'm starting to understand why. Uh, well, I mean, if you feel with uh, you know that you're not going to put yourself in any sort of unpleasant situation, I mean, you know, even just raised voices, sure. But I I like Fred's solution. Just. Ask the police to accompany. You, you see, you see that happen all the time. I think I'd rather start a, a, a discourse with the resident okay. first yeah. before pushing to that level. Do you okay. want the council to do something first. Would you like support? Um, I mean, you can have a council member I'm drinking a coffee people. while your people are yeah. doing the work. I don't think so. I think um, a council directing me to, to to contact the resident and try and suss out what the issue is is fine. Yeah, and, and don't put yourself in any sort of situation. No, I don't think I'm concerned about that. Yeah, just, just report back, and if yeah. we need to escalate, then we will. Uh, you know, the most important thing to me is that, that, that this p person is holding uh, any number of residents in some jeopardy uh, simply because they have an issue. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what it is. Okay, so I think that's probably good enough for now. Um, how are we going to respond to so the, the issue? It, I'll phone Anne Marie if that's fine with the staff's blessing and say that it's in hand. This is now in public. I'd like the response to be in public too. I need it to, to be written. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, with that. A uh, bit bigger fish for you to do. Well, yeah, I mean, happy to do it, but uh, thanks for volunteering. So, Peter, you said you were going to tell us why, uh, in general, we don't have outgoing correspondence uh, in the agenda, in response to the incoming that is in the agenda. Uh, well, I mean, one of the um, one of the principles is that um, uh, if you're responding on behalf of council, but council hasn't had an opportunity to review the incoming and formulate a consensus opinion, then you're doing so prior to that taking place. So that's kind of putting the cart before the horse. But on the other hand, timeliness is important as well and communication. So it, it's it's one of those ones where you've got you've got two sides of a coin and you, you try and balance them as best you can. Um, I had promised that I would come back with uh, a correspondence policy. Um, I've been carrying that around in my briefcase and haven't got it ready for today. Um, but um, I, that's that's the balancing act is one of the things I'm trying to trying to address. As an example, um, I thought there was another one here today. But um, as an example, the uh, the response that you gave to Mr. Aran Shahi, Aran Shahi um, was was very it was informative. 
but not committal. You weren't you weren't promising to do something or taking action or espousing an opinion that was different than uh, council policy. Absolutely, uh, nor would I. Or, or that you know, if there isn't a policy, stating something that wasn't yet determined. So that that was a good response. Um, however, I thought that there was something else. Uh, but maybe it didn't make it onto this agenda. It might have come in later. Um, and th th I guess the danger is, is, you know, having a response that isn't necessarily or, uh, yeah, I think we or somewhat that. at odds with what council might otherwise, or some members, you know, not okay. having had an opportunity to discuss it. Okay, that, that aside, respond. The, the issue is, is a little one step above that. That is, that if it merits going into the agenda package for incoming, the response to it also mer merits going in. So the response that Ron is going to write needs to be in the agenda package. Why? So the public can see the response. But they see the request. Yeah, yeah. but now you, you've discussed it. So his response but that's always only been the would, case. would come later. And I would hope that any response I do off my own recognizance is with the, the, the hope and future approval uh, of council. And it is always uh, not committing us to anything. It's really just a timely response. I'll note mm -hmm. that there's something in here from October 24th that we're just now getting to now. That's, that's too long, even, even uh, for municipal business. So okay. I, I would like to see any response to incoming that makes it as far as getting into the package, which seems to me the only criterion is if it's addressed to council, right? It, it comes in. More or less for a majority of council. Yeah. Uh, which I suppose is the public's expectation. If they address something to council, it comes to council. Um, some of it can be handled right off the bat by a return of post. Some takes a discussion, just like we've had now, and, and Ron will write the response. But unless I'm misreading council, we should see the response to the public. You okay with that? As far as uh, policy goes? I can I can imagine some things that you know every piece of correspondence that we send out of out of the office isn't necessarily going to be yeah but it didn't come to council no right okay if it comes to council I, I believe the public has a right to see what the response is because right now we have a bunch of unanswered letters mm -hmm. so if I lead this one because of this one that's on the table now so then I would respond and copy agenda agenda yeah and it'll appear in either an outgoing section or just in or the correspondence section Sean, it creates a new section or something mm -hmm. yeah we'll look at the, the, okay. the, the, the mechanics of it uh, mechanics how about we it, do yeah. me as the guinea pig on this one then? sure my question is do we treat all correspondence the same way in other words one we have no issues with or issue you know we we, we feel there's no need to respond like there's several here yeah and so but those are usually we'll not resident ones uh, some of them will be congratulations yeah. and no response required then That's we wouldn't right. respond to that yeah. uh, I okay. think it would be fair to say that uh, the general correspondence unless it's you Carl uh, nobody else would respond uh, unless council delegated unless them to done, like, the thing yeah I mean I don't want to say my responses are innocuous no, uh, but they're more no, polite but, I mean they're looking for a formal top dog here so is that you or Peter uh, so I think the resident one is where I think you're, you're the bigger em yeah. em emphasis is. Yeah. Okay. So let's use me as a guinea pig, and we'll, I mean, December should be late, so let's run it through. Okay, good. So let's do exactly that. Uh, whether, yeah, okay, I'll let you worry about the mechanics, Peter, if it's a separate section or just all mixed into the correspondence. Okay. And we can almost say in this, I, you know, whenever I do do a response in, in, um, on the fly, I say in response to your your letter, so that it's understood. Which reminds me, I've got to send you. Uh, you would have my concurrence on your responses, the quick ones that, you know. I it's a judgment call, I know, and in theory I should wait for another two weeks to get counsel's right, okay. And then. You know, the, the here and now is better than the asking for confirmation later. Yeah. In now this case. one I think would need a council discussion. Okay, I think that's enough discussion on Correspondence, unless anybody wants to say any more. So, motion to receive correspondence, and a second, uh, yeah, second, please. And uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. So, where do we stand? Uh, new business.
and public questions and comments. Oh, I had some, but you were on new business. Are no new business? No, we've moved on. Okay, so I, I have two questions sitting here listening. Um, this is the Turpin Panorama Road. The municipal grant application, sorry, I was having a really good giggle back there. Um, <laughs> the community has never had to do one of these, with all due respect, for wanting to have red tape and, and paperwork for people to have to fill out. The Santa's Breakfast was started by myself donkeys years ago when we used to do caroling for Santa, Santa coming in and Blair used to come in and we do caroling in the hall. The Parks and Recreation Committee was defunct, so I took over that by myself, decided I needed help, and invited the play school who needed money to be a partner in providing Santa's breakfast. Um, for them to be able to use the chairs and tables, I think having to fill out a municipal grant application is absurd, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> it's an um, Nobody's going to know that they have this paperwork. It creates more work for staff. It creates more work for everybody when they can just come before council and say, hey, could we please borrow the tables and chairs? The common sense of that seems to be giving you guys a lot of red tape and paperwork and environmental concerns that aren't necessary. And to the point about communication, I think, um, Peter, you were looking for the one on page 89 in reference to TransLink. And communication um, that I'm used to had always gone from the chief administrator. The mayor or councillors weren't supposed to be sending out correspondence. And then if it was deemed appropriate, it would come back to the table and be addressed by the whole table. So that we weren't getting the mayor in trouble or councillors. And it was the position of the office. And then it came with recommendations to the table. So those were my points. Thank you for my two minutes. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, yeah, those are valid points. Uh, we'll take those under advisement. I think the reason that the mayor responds is in order to get something out at all, uh, because uh, staff is snowed under, don't have time to respond to letters. Um, and as to uh, the paperwork. The paperwork's been in process for three years. I mm. think this will be the fourth year. And when you're putting out um, uh, planning a year ahead for, in this particular camp, uh, example, the works department, the ask was actually not just for tables and chairs, it was for works department. Mm. So it's about a planning activity and had they done this then they might have changed their date and got some of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think, you know, in order to not establish precedent so that anybody by asking can get something that somebody else couldn't get, we have to have a process. So we're going to um, uh, move on to the next item, which is the closed council meeting. And uh, I need a motion, please, that the meeting be closed to the public on the basis of matters to be considered under sections 91C and E and 92B. That's a motion. And a second. Whatever one this fits into as well. Here. In case I do go away. There you go. I'm not sure. Okay. Thanks. In case. Okay, so uh, we didn't actually change the uh, agenda for that. We'll fit it in under B. Okay. Yeah, we're good. So uh, I need a motion and a second. Uh, Ron had a motion, second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So the meeting is now closed. Okay, so we're coming out of the uh, closed meeting at 9.15. Nothing to report other than the fact that items were discussed pertaining to the reasons for closing the meeting. Uh, there's one deferred item on the uh, remaining on the agenda for the regular meeting, and that is the public delegation. Uh, the proponent did not show up, and so we will declare that null. How do you defer? I guess we could defer table. Um, so it ain't, ain't happening tonight. Yeah, I think just it's acknowledged that there was a no show and. Okay. Maybe they'll if they want to if they want to come back another day they should have reschedule. to re reschedule it or yeah. reapply. Yeah. Submit another. Okay, another so that uh, the public delegation uh, did not appear and uh, that item is thus closed. And I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. And a second. All in favor? Close that carries.